All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kel. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is Sunday Site Visit 11, featuring an expedition inside the Pyramid of Teddy I in Saqqara. And I have visited Saqqara maybe 10 times, but this is my first expedition inside of this particular pyramid. And as with all of my on-site explorations, I'm never sure exactly what I will find, but there is always something new and exciting to discover. And inside this particular pyramid was no disappointment with some very intriguing features that you will see here in just a moment. Also, if you're new to the channel, please check out the playlist, all episodes starting from the beginning. One of the main questions that comes up from new viewers here on the channel in the comment section is, why all the stones surrounding the construction of the Egyptian pyramids? Well, in episode 27, the function of the pyramid body, I present five unique explanations for the function of the massive stones surrounding the internal reaction chambers of the Egyptian pyramids. Another question that comes up, what were the uses for all of these chemicals being produced? Well, in episode 42 through 46, I present an entire series explaining the applications for the various chemicals that were produced inside of the Egyptian pyramids by this ancient civilization. So if you're new, check out the playlist to get caught up and hope you enjoy the ride. If you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. So to preface the footage that you are about to see, here are some diagrams for orientation inside the pyramid. And as I mentioned in the intro, this was my first time inside the structure and I had never investigated its configuration. However, as soon as I entered, I knew it was constructed in a very similar manner to the Pyramid of Winis, which I have presented in Sunday site visit number three. So here is a diagram showing the internal components of the Pyramid of Winis to refresh your memory with the entrance here at B, the granite valve system here at E, the ancillary chambers here at H, and the primary reaction chamber here at F. And this is a diagram of the Pyramid of Teddy I, almost the exact same configuration. And I double checked a few sources just to make sure someone didn't confuse these two pyramids and multiple sources confirmed that the components are almost identical with a few small but very important differences that I'll be discussing in some upcoming research episodes. And just to get your attention, I have almost three months of research-based episodes on my to-do list, not to mention a mountain of on-site footage for more Sunday site visits. So it's shaping up to be a very exciting summer indeed here on the land of Chem. And just a few details to point out before we jump into the footage. These channels inside the black Greyweck container, and that's correct, ladies and gentlemen, the research shows that this is not black basalt. It is a stone called black Greyweck, and it is the same that was utilized inside the Pyramid of Winis. And these channels certainly appear to be a housing for something that slid into the container, which definitely makes things a lot more interesting. And here, you can see some very unusual fluid erosion patterns inside the antechamber leading into the main passageway toward the reaction chambers. So keep an eye out for this feature in the footage. And now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy Sunday Site Visit 11. All right, everyone, here we go into a structure good, that I've never entered before. This is the pyramid of quote unquote Teti. So we shall see what we find. Chill for a sec, let this group go. Are you here inside the 
fancy chamber. And I can already see the remnants of the red granite valves. Here. And here. Very similar to what we saw in the configuration of the Pyramid of Moniz. And you may be noticing this black staining here. And this looks like carbon deposit from soot. And it's very easy to distinguish. So as we proceed, hang in here, these valves. All right, so again, very similar configuration to what we saw in the Pyramid of Winnie's. This is limestone, this is red granite, and your entire valve system is composed of red granite because it is not just a valve system. You can see this is patchwork here. This is the valve system here. So not just a valve system. Very similar to what we'll be discussing in terms of the antechamber of the Great Pyramid. This red granite was incorporated for a very specific reason. As I have recently revealed, in my episode discussing red granite and the production of ultrasound. So this chamber is very similar to what we saw inside the Pyramid of Wings. Yep, almost the exact same configuration here. to be black basalt. You can see there are some inscriptions on the inside of this container. To me, it is certainly not reminiscent of the quality of the construction of the container itself. Very similar to what we find in the Serapium where just because there's carvings on a container does not mean that they are from the same time period as the construction of the container. And this is all modern restoration work here that has been implemented to, and this piece looks like it slid down piece here was originally fitted into the ceiling. And I wonder if there is calcite behind here, because as we saw in the Pyramid of Winnice, there's calcite crystal in the back portion of the chamber. You can see these beams have been added in here to stabilize this entire portion because it was most likely in a state of disrepair. And if, if this pyramid has the same configuration as the Pyramid of Winnice, this will be a set of ancillary chambers with very profound acoustic properties. All right, so here, yeah, now we're getting into the nuts and bolts. Another big slab of red granite here which it does not surprise me that it's located here on the inner portion of the chamber. This is my first time in here, so I'm not gonna get into details of what I'm already thinking the structure is for, but we've already discussed acoustic propagation of that ultrasound into the chambers, which is exactly why you see this red granite here and the red granite on the valve. We're calling it a valve system for now, but there's much more to it. Oh yeah, another acoustic chamber, acoustic amplification chamber, ultrasound amplification chamber. More on this coming up soon. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I have some Fire Land of Chem merch, hoodies, long sleeve shirts, t-shirts, both logos, a bunch of different colors. I have a ton of people asking about book reprints, which will be available soon, and I'll be making a special announcement here on the channel when those are available. Also, extremely rare, signed copies of the limited first edition Purple Orchid print 
will also be released on my website soon. Just stay tuned. But for now, if you want to show some love, just check out thelandofchem.com. And thank you all so much for the support. And I've already seen several groups just come in and out of here because there's no higher boats in here. But again, the acoustic properties in this chamber are absolutely astounding. And I'm looking at these here, which is, this is modern restoration work. This is Ministry of Antiquities work here. But they reconstructed something that was in here. Again, in the Pyramid of Winis, this is separated into three chamber houses. There's a wall or a partition that goes here. And you can see the piece of the original material right here that was anchored into the wall. So there's mortar here. And there's mortar here. So there was most likely a piece that was anchored into this portion of the structure here and over here. And they reconstructed a portion of it. But for, it certainly looks like it would have gone all the way up the wall which would make the configuration of these chambers identical to the Pyramid of Winnie's. So everything that we've seen in here, there you go, you can see on the, the top of the ceiling here, how the, the black staining here stops because the original construction would have gone all the way up to the top here. But this partition, that's the exact same as what we saw in the Pyramid of Winnie's has now been removed. So you see this board here? There would originally have been a, a wall that separated this section and this section here. Again, why go through all the effort of removing that? Um, within the Pyramid of Winis, the acoustic amplification inside of this part of the structure is a lot louder. And I wonder if those three partitions are a part of that system. Pretty cool stuff, my first time in here. And now we're gonna make our way out of the structure, but there was definitely a partition that went up here, you can see. And we're exiting the pyramid of quote unquote Teddy. And a couple things immediately caught my attention. These grooves here in the stone. Very interesting. Seems to only be on this block. And if you look here, it looks like there was something flowing through here. There's definitely a flow pattern going through this stone. And there's a patch right there. And if you look here, there is another patch here. And this is in the exact same location as the patch inside the Pyramid of Winis, which is where I would propose is the water inlet shaft at the bottom of the northern shaft. The exact same configuration as the pit inside the red Pyramid of Dashur. And there's a pit. I had to cut there so I could let a huge group go. We were just looking at the flow pattern here in this stone and discussing this patch right here, which is in the exact same location as the patch in the hole. Go. The exact same location as the hole in the pit that I proposed for the Pyramid of Winis. Exact same location as the pit in the Red Pyramid at the bottom of the northern shaft. So this is the area where the water is introduced into the structure. Hold on, hold on one second. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was Sunday Site Visit 11 featuring the Pyramid of Teddy I in Saqqara. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode in the series, I will be discussing some new revelations regarding the applications for the aqueous ammonia solution that was being produced inside of the Red Pyramid of Dashur. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification button, like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.